This is Under the Air Sports. I'm Eric. And I'm David. And Cardinal Baseball is back. Today we're going to talk about our predictions for the season, and uh, it'll be perfect opportunity for everyone to go back in the fall and point out what kind of idiots we are. Uh, before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and find us on Facebook and Instagram. Now, David, let, let, let's begin making fools of ourselves here. Uh, first, let's talk who you think is going to be the offensive MV, MVP for the season. Ooh. Now, that's a tough one because we got a couple of good candidates, but I'm going to go with Nolan Arenado. Um, as much as I want to give it to Goldschmidt, I think Arenado is actually going to be behind Goldschmidt in the lineup, which will add to even more uh, chances for just scoring RBIs and just making things happen. So my thoughts on this would be Nolan Arenado is going to be your most important offensive player. Yeah, you know, it, it pretty much is a coin flip uh, at this point. You know, it may come down to one one guy has a, uh, you know, an over 15 slump and the other doesn't. Uh, and over 162 games, you know, who knows? Um, I'm going to go with Goldschmidt. Uh, I, I, th- I think he's going to benefit from having Arenado right there in the lineup with him. Um, and, and, you know, part, there's a part of me that, that worries that Arenado – Maybe his numbers dip just a little bit, uh, not being at Coors Field. Uh, even if it's just a modest dip, it still may be enough to where Goldschmidt has a better season. Um, I guess I guess my other question is who's batting first between the two? Yeah, and, and you know, my- when we see what happens there, I think that's going to be very telling in terms of uh, in terms of who has more production and whether or not it stays consistent. Uh, depending on matchups or if one's in a slump or if uh, Mike Schilt keeps it pretty consistent throughout the season, no matter what. Now let's take a look at pitching. Uh, who is your team Cy Young winner? I chose Jack Flaherty because the stuff is there. Uh, the biggest thing I want to see out of him is consistency I know he's rubbed a lot of people the wrong way with his off-season antics on Twitter and whatnot and, like, challenging the team through arbitration. But if he puts all that behind him and pitches the way he can, I think he could easily be a Cy Young. It's just a matter of consistency with him. Um, I don't know. With the rest of our uh, starting rotation, uh, to me it's kind of suspect because, I mean, you know what you get with Wainwright – but everybody else is borderline injury prone. So who knows? That's why I'm going with Flaherty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So based on everybody's ceiling, it's clearly Jack Flaherty has the highest ceiling. Um, I'm going to go with Wayno. Uh, I I think Wainwright is going to be steady all season long. I think Flaherty will have a couple of games where he's got that no hit kind of stuff. But I also think he's going to have almost like a mediocre Lance Lynn kind of game where he just labors his way, you know, 95 pitches and four and two-thirds innings. I think he'll have enough of those that Wayno ends up with the best season overall. But, like you said, between the two of them, they both need to pitch well, given uh, – just given the issues with pitching. And this kind of goes right into our next – category here most important player on the team for me I'm going Carlos Martinez and it's like I was just beginning to say you look at Wainwright and Flaherty you pretty much know what you're going to get you look with KK on the shelf for at least a few starts and Miles Michaelis for who knows how long Uh, Dakota Hudson's out for the year uh, recovering from Tommy John you're looking at uh, Daniel Ponce de Leon and John Gant both are capable of on a given night going, you know, seven innings, one or two runs, something like that. But you can't expect that from them. They, they, neither one has shown the ability to consistently do that. That leaves Carlos Martinez, who we all know what he's capable of, both good and bad. Yeah, I, he doesn't need to go out there with the no-hit stuff that he has somewhere 
within him every single time, but he needs to not go out there and one and two thirds, seven runs, five walks type of thing. Uh, like his first spring training start of the season where he absolutely imploded. He can't have those kind of starts uh, if the Cardinals are going to be successful, especially while the Cardinals are waiting to get uh, KK healthy. Yeah, and you never know what you're getting out of Michaelis whenever he comes back. If he That's why back. I didn't mention him because I think he's a crapshoot at best. <laughs> Fair enough. Um I think my most important player probably is Tommy Evan. Uh, the reason why I'm going with him is because he is the start of your offense. Uh, right now they have him at short. Uh, let's face it, we don't have any other second baseman unless you want to put my, Matt Carpenter in there, and Lord knows you don't want him up at bat. Um, also with Edmund, he's your backup outfielder, your backup shortstop, possibly your backup third baseman. He pretty much can back up everybody because he's our uh, utility guy. Yeah. However, he needs to play a solid second, and he needs to have a good at bat every time he's up. Um, I'm not looking, again, for home runs or anything like that. If anything, I want to see him with a high average and a high on-base percentage uh, to get in front for uh, Goldie and Arenado. Uh, so in my opinion, this team goes, if Evan goes. Yeah. You know, if, if he bats, if he bats 280 and has an on-base percentage approaching 400, the, the offense is going to do some damage. Uh, on the other side, even if he, if he gets hurt, the, uh, you know, the, the, the shuffling of getting guys days off, things of that nature, Mike Schultz runs out of options real fast. If Tommy Edmond gets hurt. He gives you that flexibility, as you mentioned, being able to play uh, three infield positions and, and, and the outfield. Now, which oh, I ahead. think is our weakest area right now, anyway. But sorry for interrupting. No, you're fine. Uh, I was just going to say with our next category uh, over under for wins for the Cardinals. Uh, pretty sure on the graphic we put. We posted yesterday, it was 87 and a half. That is a little higher than what most of the Vegas uh, books listed, which is 86 and a half wins for the Cardinals. Uh, so what do you think about that? Well, I picked over um, mainly looking at the Central. I don't think there's many teams who have a better lineup and not saying we have a great lineup. There's a lot of holes uh, in our team still. But I think overall on paper, if you compare teams, I think we have the best overall team. So I'm looking at maybe 90 wins, 91 wins. Because, um, I mean, was it Pittsburgh is just going to be at the bottom? Then you have Cincinnati. Who knows what they do? They have a lot of good young pitching, but nothing else. Um, Milwaukee is going to maybe be in the mix, maybe not. You never know what they come out with. And then Chicago is Chicago, but they look to be like revamping and dumping players and things like that. So based off the moves this off season, I think the Cardinals added the most and probably strengthened their lineup the most to have a shot at the division. I don't think it's going to be a very strong division. So if they can take grasp of those easy games, I think they're going to have 90 wins. I agree with absolutely everything you just said. I took the over as well. I think the Cardinals, you know, sitting here right before the season starts, trying to think, oh, I'm going to, I think they're going to win 90. No, no, 91. I mean, come on. That, that's, that's a little too nitpicky for six months down the road. But I, I do think they'll hit the over and be close to, if not over 90 games. Uh, it's every team in the division except the Cardinals got worse. The Pirates are the Pirates are going to do their best impression of the 2003 Tigers, and they're gonna they're gonna lose 100 games. The Reds lost Trevor Bauer. The Brewers, uh, you know, with their epic free agent signing of Colton Wong, you know, great defense, but meh, offensively. Um, and then uh, the Cubs, uh, like you said, they look like they're on step one of you know of just completely imploding the team and then rebuilding it. Uh, we may not hear from them for another five, six years, depending on uh, how this year goes. 
for, for the division. It's almost the Cardinals by default. And it's not because they're that good. The division, I think, may be the worst in baseball. That's even worse than the AL Central. Which, yeah, I can't really argue with that. Yeah. it's Because we're, we're talking about rotation issues with the Cardinals and still being number one in the division. I mean, yeah, <laughs> how crazy is that? Uh, yeah. Uh, this rolls into, uh, rolls into our the last prediction that we had on our graphic yesterday. We both have the Cardinals winning the division, and it's not necessarily because the Cardinals are so great. Yeah, we'll have a better idea of how good they are when they play teams like San Diego and uh, L.A. Both of those teams are making a run for the championship, and you can tell by the Even Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, even Atlanta. That's another good barometer. If we can put up a fight against them, we might have something, but – until I see it, I mean, the potential's there. It's just a matter of can they pull it out and stay healthy. I'm, I'm, if you keep an eye on the Blues, the Blues haven't done that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so last last one here, uh, David. Uh, this is just on the fly here. So uh, if you need to think about it, take a second. But we both got the Cardinals winning the Central, so they'd be in the playoffs. Do you see them doing much of anything in the playoffs? I mean, any team can go on a run. You, If you have a good one-two punch, so if KK comes back healthy and you have Flaherty and Wainwright and KK all p- pitching at their best, I could see them easily taking the first round. Um, the mat- It all comes down to hitting, honestly. Yeah. Um, how good is our offense going to be? And that's still up in the air with the way our outfield is. Um, you know what you got in Arenado uh, and Goldschmidt, but you're also want to. I want to see something out of our shortstop, Paul DeYoung. That's another one we haven't mentioned yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, so do I think they go more than that? I think they could potentially get to the NLCS. I'm not sure they'd get past that. Yeah, I agree. I, I think the NLCS is the ceiling, uh, which, I mean, yeah, it's pretty good, but. I mean, let's face it, we're Cardinals fans. We're not Braves fans or Padres fans. We, we want more than that, right? Uh, Car- Cardinals fans want to be in the World Series every year. Uh, yeah, I, 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 given the limitations of the offense, even with Arenado and Goldschmidt, I think it would take KK, Wayno and Flaherty all being B-plus or better Uh in their starts in a division series for the Cardinals to have a chance to move on. You know, if, if it goes to a game four, then you're looking at uh, who Carlos Martinez, Miles Michaelis. You can chalk that up as an L almost guaranteed. Or Gant or, or yeah. Ponce de Leon, depending on yeah. how the season goes. Yeah. You, you, you can't count on that in the playoffs. You, you just can't. Uh, I think a win in a game like that would be luck. So it would take the three, the big three uh, starters, uh, if you will. They'd have to be on for the Cardinals to have a chance to advance. Anyway, uh, that's our predictions for the season coming up. Thank you for watching Under the Arts Sports. Stay tuned as the season unfolds and we'll evaluate games and go from there. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.